from Matt Leggett, who, who will be here probably a little bit later, but he's not here now, um, and I didn't want to miss the opportunity, but apparently there were 17 mailboxes hit within a two-mile stretch on um, Merchant's Row yep. over the last year. So um, I know that a lot of people had messaged me. And my original response was, uh, which uh, Shelly will tell you, my original response was to send them all the law, which states, you know, basically the town isn't responsible for your mailbox. Um, however, 17 of them in a two-mile stretch of roadway is a lot. Um, and so I thought it was important to mention, and other people had uh, mentioned to me maybe we should uh, talk about it tonight because that's a lot. Okay, so Somebody I should be responsible. For yeah, I was contacted by um, some people and I talked to Scott and Scott said he is replacing the mailboxes. Um, he did say in the spring, which is a little concerning because you need to get your mail. I, I, I assume you're here because of the mailboxes? No, that? actually, I'm, I'm part of the agenda. I'm okay. excited. Her, 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 her sister. I, I, I live with my sister, and two of her, her is hand for daycare, both got taken out right at the ground. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, the person driving my truck will no longer be driving that truck. Yeah. Um, so, but Scott did say he was going to take care of the mailboxes. Um, and I was thinking that it probably should be sooner than later. I, I, yeah, go ahead. He's asking that everybody reach out to him directly so he can take your information. Okay. So, yeah. so if anybody is concerned about their mailboxes or wants to reach out to Scott, they can. In, just in that particular area, I would imagine not everybody that's had their mailbox. Yeah, well, yeah. There was another one, that, a, a friend of mine who lost theirs that I took care of, which was pretty easy. But. Yeah, I, I think in general, 17 is rather excessive number. Yeah, <laughs> for, for a two-mile. Yeah, stretch of road. Even for 10 miles, 17. So, that was, that was probably wrong as well. Don't so, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and message them that. all back and tell them that all right, Scott's willing to take care of those, those mailboxes. Yep. And then anything other than that, people can get in touch with Scott. Yep. Um, on a one case, one. Case, case. Yep. Okay. okay. Awesome. So, uh, the other thing is, uh, after we have an appeals board hearing, I like to um, update you folks, and we had an administrative appeal um, of Carmen Carboni on Monday, uh, and the board denied that uh, administrative appeal. So, um, the minutes are being done, and I should do my fact and filing over the weekend, and you'll probably have that Monday. Awesome. Um, that's it. yeah. I think so. Wow. Isn't that enough? Anybody else for public participation? Yes, sir. Um, first, I had a question on the uh, Mike Walsworth. Yeah, I know Mike. Good. Um, on the five minutes for public speaking, I'm just confused on how that's tracked because there's a lot of interaction back and forth. So, is it five minutes of me speaking, five minutes total time? Like, how how is it? How does that rule work? How is it enforced? Um, it, Depends on how it's going, but usually it's up to the chair if he wants to extend that five well, minutes. I mean, as far as tracking it, so do I get five minutes where I'm talking, or is it five minutes um, per question, per topic? It's just we a kind of, day. We kind of, Yeah, we kind of play it by ear. So I, I, I like to run a meeting where it's public participation, and if someone has something that's 
in the town. They want to come in and use this forum to speak. I, I don't like cutting them off, as you, as you know, but several people go on past that. And um, I think if we close our ears and shut people down, um, you know, we don't know everything. We can learn a lot from different things people are talking about. So, um, yeah, and I understand that it is your point of view, and it's that it is as clear watching the meetings. Yep. Yeah. That's how you want it. But the reason I'm asking the question is, so if I wanted to track my own time to make sure, A, that I don't go over and B, that I get my full five minutes that's allotted to me, how do I track that? Uh, if you want to track it, you can probably do it with your smartphone. Right. I can start a timer, but do I stop it when someone's talking back to me? Or like, how does that? No. Okay. So it's five minutes from when I start and then... Yeah, I, I, as you know, and I've taken a lot of flack for this, I don't really stick to the five-minute rule because, like I said, okay. some people have things to talk about, and I think putting people on a timer, unless it's executive session coming up or an appointment, um, I think it's kind of rude to cut a resident off or someone that pays taxes in this town that wants to speak. Okay. Um, yeah, that goes right into my next my next question. Um, the you, You've been... Um, affirmed to still be on the board through, yep. through the recall election, you're still the chair. So you really do control the atmosphere of the meetings. Um, so I just wanted to petition the board um, in your open style meetings when people are trying to talk, and it doesn't just happen in this meeting, it's happened in other meetings that I've been to, is, is the side comments. And, and there are people who are very I said I respect a lot for their involvement in the town. They, they, they do a lot. Um, I don't want to mention anybody by name, but um, I, I think that there are people who come to these meetings regularly, and they're very important people. They they because they participate. Yep. But the side comments make the heated things going on worse. No, I. I so I, I, that's my petition to you as the chair is to. Try to keep those side comments down so we can have more constructive meetings. Oh, I, I, I do attempt to do that, and I do talk to them individually sometimes after meetings yeah. um, because I've gotten to know them through these meetings and through my position, so I agree with what you're saying. Um, thank you, yeah. And so another couple of questions, a small town talk that I wanted to get answers directly from, from you guys. Um, the first one was uh, about about power. So, um, is the contracts for the plowing are they the people who won the contracts? Are they related to the road commissioner? Are um, they family members? I don't. I don't think they are. I know he has a contract for his business for one or two trucks, um, but I I don't think the other ones are necessarily related to him. But so the, the road commissioners, the road commissioner's own business has the contract for plowing. One of them, he's one of the contractors, yeah. So I just don't understand how that's not a conflict. How can a public official hire himself? It's his business, and if he's doing the job, I, I don't. It was like the hires him, not the he doesn't hire himself. The hire for the smoker. I don't see the problem with it if he's doing the job. I think it's been so, for years in this town. Yeah, I haven't signed for it. So, so, so that is so it is true. Uh, to rephrase my question, um, the, or the answer to the question, the road commissioner has the town has contracts with the road commissioner's business. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, the no, oh, I can't read my writing. <laughs> um, <coughs> Oh, yes. So uh, I have a question again. This is a small town talk. I just want to hear from the source. And this is a question for each um, member of the board. Um, is anybody growing marijuana for other than personal use? All right, we can go around. I'm not. Currently? Yes. No. And um, Paul? Yep. Currently. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jeff? No, I used to become a drug. I used to fight it. So no. Three in a year? No, I'm not. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, the so moving on. Next question is um, the marijuana committee was dissolved 
I don't remember. I don't remember being officially notified of that, um, but I was I was informed that it was dissolved. If that is the case, um, and, and again, this is not an attack on anybody, but why why is the former chair of the cannabis committee still providing input from marijuana forms, working on the ordinance amendments? And why is he still involved in that process? Because the board is asking to help. So, so he was asked outside of his former position as the cannabis committee chair, or is he still working in that capacity? No, he's working as a, as a resident helping. Okay. Um, so, so I wanted to talk about the marijuana ordinances in general. Um, so we, we kind of started this conversation last night at the budget committee, but I wanted to continue it in a more appropriate setting. Yep. Um, so the regardless of your point of view on marijuana use being legal, not legal, good, bad, beneficial, whatever, I am coming not from any of those positions. It's just purely from an economical position for the town. Is this good business? For the town, what allowing marijuana to be legally sold at the retail level in the town? It was voted by the people. I, I know. I, okay. I understand that. Okay, but I'm telling you, that's my point of view. That's my where I'm coming from. Is not a personal belief in marijuana. Economics. It's economics, what? right? Is it good for the town? Um, I I believe that a very good case was presented in the cannabis committee that it is not. And I don't believe that information was passed on to the entire board of select. And I think it only was passed on to you. There seemed to be a lot of communication. There seemed to be a lot of communication between you and the chair of the committee. It was that was not passed on to me. Okay, but it's irrelevant what the opinion. So it's it's irrelevant at this point. Hold on. It's but irrelevant. It doesn't, it's irrelevant at this point if you got the information or not. But what is that information itself is not irrelevant. That it is. I'll tell you why because the, the, the people voted it in. So regardless of what you think, what I think, what the right. board thinks, the people made the decision on that. They did. Okay. That, that's that it's not mean, my town. It's not your town. It doesn't mean there's not an opportunity for the people of this of the town to change that. If, if the board. Has more information, different information. When these ordinances come up for a referendum, the board could um, actually what add to those amendments or to the referendum that if these don't pass, what's going to happen? They're going to go back to the old ordinances. Is there going to be a clause that if the new ones don't pass, that marijuana will be retail marijuana will be illegal across the board? Like, so there's an opportunity here to not. Just keep going with this. Keep pushing. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. Um, it's it's a pipe dream that marijuana is going to make this kind of money. You got no way to enforce it. No way to enforce it. And it in a, a large percentage of places where it is legal, they're not even making money on it. Uh, it takes a tremendous amount of money to be invested into retail marijuana from the municipal side in order to make money on it. We've already got as a town tens of thousands of dollars involved just getting these ordinances through the lawyers, lawsuits that have already come up. How much money do you expect the town to spend before you even can make money? So let me ask Why you are we spending money before it's even coming in? Okay. We're, we're not we're spending money to make sure the ordinances are correct and in place. But if the citizens decide they want to put a petition on the ballot mm -hmm. and they want to set up their own marijuana referendum, they can do that. And if it's voted in by the people, then we have no say over any of it. So it could be voted in, they could make a referendum and it could get voted in that however they want to lay it out, and then we are completely at the mercy of that. So the board made a decision to be proactive mm -hmm. and come up with a referendum that allowed us to enforce it and gave us the monetary backing to enforce it. But it's not being enforced currently. Um, no, it's not because we don't want to spend taxpayer money on enforcing and fighting with certain, like a couple businesses in town. 
So how how is that going to change? If, so the new one, say the new amendments go through, right? Yeah. How is that going to change? You're going to have bigger business coming in. You're going to have more people coming in, more lawsuits. You're not going to make enough money. We are not going to make enough money to fight this. Oh, we are. No, we're not. We are. You know, we're going to have a difference of opinion. It's, 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 not, it's, it's, it's not fact yet, but we are. We're not gonna, it's not going to be making money to fight it. Lebanon cannot, it, it is a fact. Lebanon will not be the only town in the United States that can make this work when nobody else can. The evidence, hardcore factual evidence, suggests otherwise. Okay. I agree, but we have to take what the people voted in and make it work. Right? I, I know. Okay. So, but you're not making it work, first of all. What do you mean we're not working? The, 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 the signs, the, the, the businesses have been illegal for years. They're still illegal because they don't have their licenses. That's they're putting up signs that are license. against the ordinances mm -hmm. that are passed. Okay. Which, which All right. Ones, which they're, 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 they're not going to pay. Why would they pay their application fees? They could, they could pay a lawyer because they sign out of court and never get an application. If they don't have to pay the if they don't pay the application fee, they need to have through the Office of Marijuana Policy, they need municipal municipal approval. They don't because they're already operating without no, it. They do. They don't. They already they're already yeah. operating without it. Okay. Well, we can. The state's not enforcing it. We're not enforcing it. Why would that change? The state has hired a lot of new enforcement officers. It's not going to change. Okay. Well, government okay. doesn't change. Okay. That's another fact. Okay. It's going to bankrupt this town. It's not going to. People in this town want they. You know what? If they want to smoke pot. Go to borrow it, go to Sanford and get it and smoke it. I don't care. But don't destroy a town that's going to get taken over by a marijuana business. And look, when the marijuana business coming in, it's not going to be Lebanon people making the money. It's going to be people from out of state across the country. Because we can't enforce that. That was we already been determined by the courts. We can't enforce it, we will be able to enforce it. The court said otherwise. In order we can't enforce what? You can't have a residency requirement. I, I understand that, and that's one of the reasons that we're making changes, and the court said that in Portland after the referendum was passed. And that's why the brace will So we have to take it out now. now. The residency requirement. Does it, do the ordinances, the proposed amendments, do they not take out the residency requirement? They do. Yes. Yeah. So do you really think a bunch of small entrepreneurs are going to come in here and start businesses, or do you think it's going to be big business that's going to have more money than this town has, and the town is going to have to bend to all their wills? That's not true. Because there's a, there's it's same, already if it's already same, happening. It's, it's not. They're already, already not enforcing because we can't afford it. How is it going to get better when they will have more money than they have now? There's been several people who have already walked through the door and wanted to write a check for the fees that everyone says are outrageous. That there's been several people that want to pay that money, and that will go into a legal fund that will allow us to enforce it. Then the next bigger guy comes in with more money than is in the fund. It, do, it doesn't matter. He's, he's, got got follow the state statute. he's got to follow the state statutes, or the company does, and they have to follow the town order. But do you understand where I'm coming from with this lack of trust that it's going to be enforced? I, I do. There's no that. evidence, there's no proof. It hasn't been enforced for how many years? Have, Ten years, one of the guys has been here. Ten years. That whole time, except for one year, it was illegal. So, so, you, never so let me course. ask you a question then. If we don't have the marijuana ordinance and we don't have the fees to enforce it, how are we going to stop the people that are just opening it's up? It's easier to get four people out who have a little what bit of money. What if they just show up? It's someone just opened in July. And the four people that are already here that have been operating since before it was grandfathered are... Off, are licensed by the Office of Marijuana Policy. We've spoken to them. They are legal. The other ones that are not, there's two over there. One just opened in July. If we don't have the money to shut that person down, what about the next person that shows up? So is the day? next proposal that's going to come along is to make a police department? I don't know. Is that, is that, how else are you going to enforce it? The state police are not going to come and enforce it. They've already said that. It's a civil matter. They're not getting right. So, so if, if with, with no money coming in from marijuana, no fees for the people that are already operating, people opening up in July, that would take our whole legal budget to shut down. We've already gave a cease and desist order and they're ignoring it. So, what's to stop four other people from doing it on the strip? And then, where are we going to get the money to fight that? How, how are you enforcing all the other codes? 
Do you, do you, are there, besides marijuana, are you letting, are you, are, so you're saying there's no money for code enforcement to enforce any code That's not what I'm saying. That's, that is. No, but if you're saying that big companies are going to come in and, and with more money than the town, if we allow this referendum that is voted on by the people, so it's not even us allowing it, they're going to come in and open up. So what's to stop them from saying, oh, well, this person opened up a small little business and opened they're not shutting down. What's to stop all these people from coming in and opening up? And then we have no revenue to stop them and nobody behind us. So it's the same old, it's the same old uh, method, right? Is that what you're saying? So No, I'm not saying it's the same old method. I'm asking the same you a question. You, asked, you said to me, if we allow these businesses. We can't stop them. So let's let them all come in. No, the people decide. We can't, so, we, the people decide to. To let, to, to let them come in under a structure. Can't stop them, so it's better to, no. to not do the right no. thing. No. To not enforce ordinances. No. And that's not what I'm saying. It's better to have the, the revenue for enforcement, which we can, by law, charge in the fees for enforcement. If we don't, then we're going to be using taxpayers' money to fight these businesses that you stated yourself have more money than the town. So... Would you rather have us have You're a, proposing other things in the, in the amendments to the ordinances besides the resident thing, right? So you changed definitions from, you now created two more, a large marijuana manufacturing facility and a small. Correct. So that's a new definition that people did not vote on. Correct, but they right? didn't vote on it. So we so, didn't create anything yet. It's a proposed. Um, and you want, you're going to let businesses off of 202. That's a new proposal that's that nobody not, voted on. No, it's, in, it's in the amendments. That you're going to let manufacturing facilities off the 202. Uh, that, uh, James, can you help me out here on this one? Manufacturing Small manufacturing facilities, facilities off the 202. The 202. Yes. There were no right. changes to allow Retail people facilities off. are restricted to 202. Small manufacturing facilities are allowed off the of road 202. Yes, right. but they were allowed off before. That's not a change in, in the proposed. And then, um, by the way, this is a question. Small manufacturing facilities, one of the fees for those is for 500 square feet, whereas the definition says those are limited to 250 square feet. So you have a fee for something that's bigger in square footage than the definition allows. Just wanted to bring that up so you guys could look at it in your graphs. So um, I, I don't I don't really have anything else to add, but taking the approach that we can't stop them. We can't stop the ones that are already no, here. So, right. we, so, so we need to just kind of we need to make we need to change the law so it fits what's out there. That's it's not the right, right answer. That's that's my final comment. All right. Well, that's not what's going on. But thank you very much. Well, thank you, so. Anybody else? I would just like to add to that that there is at the state level still no revenue sharing for the town at all. Review a minute. Oh, sorry. Oh, I, I did have some. Oh, sure. I just wanted to. Yeah, no, yeah, I go. Go. So, um, Paul and I had a conversation That's last right. night after the budget oh, committee okay, guys, meeting. Please. After the budget committee meeting, and realized that um, when it, the attendees is not on the list, and I'd like to have him put on the budget committee. I'm sorry. We had one extra member last night that's not not appointed. Okay. He, he was appointed at some point, um, and he's been on the budget committee for a while. So. And how many are currently on the budget committee? There's nine on there with one alternate, but one of the members is uh, so the ten. He quit. Yeah, one one of them resigned last year. He still shows up on the appointed list. Right. right. Well, well, there's someone that was there last night that's not on the appointed. Is that what we're saying? Right, but and we do have a vacancy. Oh, we do. That's we do have problem. a vacancy. Well, yes. We have some big box, and one that's not showing up. Well, yeah. no, he quit. He did resign. Yeah. We all watched so him walk away. So he he did, resigned. I thought he was the alternate. No, he was not. He was elected. Isn't that what we said though at the meeting that he was the alternate? When we appointed him to the space for the alternate, the alternate is the yeah. who was the alternate last year. Don't have one on the list. We didn't have one last year. There's nothing, nobody on the list last year. Okay. 
and the other person's appointment ran out, it won't go. No, the one that's there is not an appointed number. Correct. His right. appointment ran out last year. Right, because he, he was an alternate. He's the only that's one year appointment. He's been on there more than one year. He's been on there at least two or three years. So he was the alternate last year? I have to assume he was. He's not on last year's list. He was the alternate. But he voted. Right. Last year. And he shouldn't have done if he was the alternate. Unless there was a shortage. But we did have somebody walk out, too, before the official. Oh, okay. All right. No, we're right. I'm just trying to figure out. I'm just confused with the whole thing. I tried to find something today that covered what happened last year. Yeah, I can't, I can't find it. Okay. So we never voted the minutes. committee well, to allow him to vote which, as the alternate. I well, my, my thought is that we should have him fill out an application and open up the spot and have. I, I'm not saying he shouldn't be appointed, but. Well, by rights, the alternate is sitting now should have first choice on the open position. Okay. And then we have to put in another one. Okay. So, how do we go about that? Well, we're, we're just saying, I mean, we can do an application and then and then apply. Okay. So, we want to ask the alternate, the current alternate, if that person wants to leave in that position. Okay. That's, that's usually the, the process that the, the alternate has for a shot. I believe it's for the ordinance. Okay. That, that's the open seat. Should we put that on the agenda for next week or should we just handle it now? No way. Now, are you interested in that seat? Yeah. So that opens the open. Um, okay. And I think we should follow the same process between following the other fields. But if he's interested in being open, we should follow it. Application and put on the agenda for next week and see if anybody else is interested. Uh, how does the board feel about that? I, I think the process is the process, and it doesn't matter really how we feel, it has to be followed. So we should stick to what we've been doing? That's the process, yeah. Um, yeah, that really isn't how things have happened, you know. I mean, technically, it's been the write ins who have who have been added to the board. So this is really a new thing with the board kind of selecting. So, so you're kind of, and, and this actually came up last night in the budget committee meeting, because there are people with votes out there. The undeclared, no, undeclared. You, the didn't have to, board, you did not have to be declared when I was a write-in. The okay? previous board so, put the people of the town voted that you need to be a declared writing to be voted to. It was put on by the previous board. And the lawyer said that it could go either way. And it wasn't this board that made the decision to say, if you want to be a writing, which I think is undemocratic, but it was chosen by the people that you need to be a declared writing. And you need to declare at the same time as a writing that the people that are taking out papers to quit, if my memory serves me correctly. 60 days. 60 days. And uh, former selectman Harlow declared as a write-in for the budget committee and followed that process. Um, and I think that, that the town voted in that he needed to declare, and I think the board as a majority agreed with that. That's why we follow this process now. The previous board followed a different process, and it was different people. <clears throat> so, anyway, that's my input. I put it out there. This is the third time I've been asked about people to, to seat on the budget committee, and they've all been overridden. So, it's my opinion. Okay. okay? Thank you. So, you want to put that on the website? You want to put an alternate on the budget committee? Anybody else public participation?
Motion to accept the meeting minutes of February 4th, 2021, as written. I'll second. All in favor? I'm Mr. Knox. Karina, you in favor? Yes, sir. Yes. 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 I watched this, yes. but I wasn't here. Unless I can, you know, yes. vote on it while watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a finished one for Attention the following expenses are posted to the long expense account. If you move the correct expense account, if approved, I will make the corrections. November 2019, $2,544.58 from health insurance payroll deduction posted under insurance. 07-01-99-51 should be posted to general government insurance 01-10-06-20. December 2019. $1,475.88 health insurance payroll deductions. Posted under insurance 0, 0701-9951 should be posted to general government insurance 01-1006-20. January 2020. $1,475.88 in health insurance payroll deductions. Posted under insurance 0701-9951. She posted the general government insurance 01 10 February 2020, $368.97 health insurance payroll deductions posted under insurance 07 should be posted to general government insurance 01 10 Total of $5,496.34 on my seat. A total of $5,496.34 will move from 0701-9951 to 01-100620. November 2019, $1,015.38 main retirement payroll deductions posted under insurance 0701-9955 should be posted to the general government 
Main retirement payroll deduction posted on insurance 0709955. Should be posted to general government insurance 0110064. January 2020, $185.82. Main retirement payroll deductions posted on insurance 0701995. Should be posted to general government insurance 0110064. And then in February 2020, $43.32. Main retirement payroll deduction. Post under insurance 0701995 should be posted to general government insurance 0110640. Total of $1,428.06. We move from 0701995 to 0110640. All of that. All of that. Hey, Chuck, you can have a little jack. Is for me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I already know what they are. Are you initial it? Oh, do I need to initial it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can we know that you review them, Blood? I already know. No, what they we're going to get that paper. Okay. Me. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I uh, I'm this, but, you know. Why? Because I know it's. <laughs> I don't think it should be there to begin with. The same that you reviewed it. Yeah. It sure did, but I got no, no skin in that game. All right. Somebody else wants it. This is a tax abatement. Um, mapping lot R07 014 SC001. We have reviewed the 2020 assessed value of the London property as a result of review. Review, we have granted abatement on London map R07 014 SC001 trio account 3751. Structure was placed on the site after 4 1 2020 and abatement for building value. So, um, the total abatement. Is $2,345.80. So basically, they counted the building to be there before the tax commitment, and it wasn't there until after. Mind to keep this file? I don't think so. Do I probably shouldn't write all over it? Probably not. <laughs> it was put in my mailbox, that's why I'm asking. I don't know who put it in there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's my turn. Well, I did. Yes, yes, I'm here. I wrote presenter. So. 
Um, first of all, I'm very excited to be here, guys. I've uh, watched a lot of these YouTube videos, so it's kind of cool to sit around the table. <laughs> so, first of all, thank you all for having me. You go up in the march. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Shelly Boucher, and I am here on behalf of a group of people who got together to create a community park here in Lebanon. I thought I'd start first by telling you guys a little bit about me and why I got involved with this project. I grew up here in Lebanon. I actually was raised right on this very street. I have rollerbladed down West Lebanon Road, stupidly. I have blown up canoes and floated down Great Brook unsuccessfully. And I've ridden a dirt bike or a four-wheeler on almost every trail around Skydive. I loved growing up in Lebanon. I loved it so much that I've actually moved back here with my husband and my three young kids, and we're going to raise them in Lebanon. So when I saw on the town website that they were putting together a committee to create a park, I instantly jumped at the opportunity. I thought if there was anything that I could do as an individual or as a resident to better this community, it was something I wanted to be a part of. Like kind of giving back to the town I grew up in. So the committee's been together for a couple months, and I really feel like we've come up with some great ideas for a park. We were thinking, first and foremost, we all agreed a veterans memorial. You know, we should definitely put something where we can show respect and appreciation for those who have fought. You know, large flagpoles and benches where you can sit and reflect or read a book. It's a really nice area. And then on the other side, we thought a playground for kids. Because Lebanon doesn't really have that. You know, they, they have the school, sure, but you can't go there during school hours. So a mom like myself, you know, it's either use a friend's playground or, you know, Make one at your house. So it would be great to be able to get together with friends and bring your kids so you could socialize along with letting your kids play. And then we thought it would be really great if we could create a structure at the park that would be like a pavilion, like a large covered area that's open on the sides where people could gather. They could have picnic tables for lunches. They could have maybe stationary charcoal grills. You could have a barbecue, you know, and we could attach maybe a small stage that, you know, local preschools could do a graduation or schools could have performances or we could do concerts in the park you know how fun would that be for Lebanon to get together and have a concert in the park then we took it a step further and we thought what if we put the pavilion on a concrete slab and then you could flood it in the winter and it'd be a cover area for ice skating for you know for people in town to be able to go somewhere and ice skate and it wouldn't have to be shoveled well, maybe a little bit, but not so much, right? <laughs> that and that go. would be great. And then, also, you know, also the park would have large, open, grassy areas and then nature trails for walking, bike, uh, maybe biking, and uh, maybe cross-country skiing in the winter. And it's just a place that people would love to go. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, where are we going to put this park? Well, well the transfer station. <laughs> Kevin. Somebody's been researching. So through our research, we actually found that the best spot would be the old Moody Farm, which is located behind the schools on the other side of the power line. Um, we walked it in the fall, and it really was a great space. It's very central to Lebanon, which is awesome. It connects both Merchants Road and Center Road, allowing it very accessible to a lot of people in town, but the park would be set back. So although the roads are busy for Lebanon, it's still a really safe place. And we found that this particular land is part of the Shackley Trust. And it can be gifted to the town, just like the land that the transfer station sits on now was gifted to the town. So at no expense to taxpayers, we could attain this land and create a great park. And then the next step, we need money, right? That's pretty much where everything goes. We need money for a border survey. We need to figure out more about this land. We need to know where the wetlands are. We need to know where the borders are. We need to know how much land is there. We assume it's about 14 acres, but we don't know. And if we ever want to build anything on this land, Lebanon would have to invest about two to three grand to getting a border survey. Secondly, we need to develop a park. We need what's called a master plan. It is. It ranges from seven to 10 grand. It is a very in-depth planning process of a park. They go so far as to look at soil samples. They look at the trees. They look at the land. They research the town. They survey the town to see what the town would like in a park. They will do mock-ups of the park. They will do engineered plans of structures we want to put, like 
the floating, uh, the water we want to put in the concrete that has to be engineered somehow. And most importantly, it will give us an idea of the cost. It, the master plan will tell us how much it will cost, cost to start the park, to build the park, to run the park, and to maintain a park. So these are two things we definitely need. And then we propose using some of the money in the Shapley Trust to pay for these two things, just the border survey and the master plan. The amount would not exceed $13,000. And in our research, we found that within that Shapley Trust, there's about 260000 dollars within that trust. So we're hoping that we can get about 13000 of it to start this planning process. Now, the money that was put in the Shapley Trust was put there to benefit the town. It says right in the workup, put here to benefit the people of Lebanon. What better way to benefit the people of Lebanon than creating a park? Now, the trustees of the Shapley Trust are you guys. You can decide right here and now whether or not we can use this money to start a park. But I'm not asking you to do that. I'm going to tell you that no, we can't. I'm, I'm, well done. Okay. I'm not asking you to do that. Instead, I'm asking you to vote tonight to put on the ballot in June a referendum question that allows the people of Lebanon to decide whether or not they would like to use this Shapley Trust money to build a park. Again, I don't think you can do that. I'm going to turn it over to Paul on this one. We did some digging today, and you probably read this as well. The uh, court settlement that was reached in. I know what, the number, this, I know what it was, but I never, I never saw it. November 12, 1963. And, and let me just interrupt and say that yep. I, I think the plan and everything that Chip has done and whatnot, not the skate park's not involved, is. It's a great idea, and I think it would benefit the people of the town a great deal. But I now I'm going to turn it back over to Paul. But if you look in there, the highlighted area, it, it, it restricts us purely to the media town. We all have a lot of views, the interest, and the money. It's only investment for the poor and needy of the town. We cannot use it for anything. Oh, really? That's a little bluster in this whole <laughs> idea, doesn't it? I did a lot of research today as much as I could find. Yeah, I appreciate you looking into so, that. So, Paul, that says the interest only? Interest only. What about sales? What about proceeds from sales? Sales go into the principal interest only. And it's covered there. Because they sold the town, the old town town itself. Right. And that's when this got into Well, yeah, the I mean, this is right. The town farm was the same chapter truck. I saw it. I do have a, an idea, and, I, and I, I don't know, I can talk to the rest of the board about this, but this was presented all the time today. And show it to me. I would be more than willing if the board would be to put something on the ballot where $13,000 came out of the general fund to go forward with this, because I think, um, yeah. I know the current balance of the general fund is pretty significant. Yeah. You know, not massive, but enough where we're not in trouble. Um, and I think this would benefit you know, a lot of people in the town. And, and just, United, it would be awesome. Well, we know our right. soccer program couldn't play soccer here. Right. I mean, that's, you yeah. know, like, can I say something? Sure. Did, did you a Boucher Boucher? I'm not. No. <laughs> I'm very a <laughs> Boucher. I'm, like, oh, I'm not. There's a lot. Oh, oh. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of Boucher. I'm not. I'm married to Boucher and he's not. I was going to say, they all like to be all kinds of construction companies. They've got them going. Yeah, right. I got my own crew. But I, I would not be opposed to that because yeah. I gave it to people. If this is one of the things where I think $13,000. Yeah. And I think it really wouldn't even be that expensive to do with what we could get out of it if we got donations and I mean look what we did at the yeah. fire department with yeah. some people in town getting together and we have a presence on Facebook chip where you could rally the troops and you know I think it would be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, yeah we talk to whoever you want. Chip now when you first started this I talked to you way back one and I love the idea of you get going. Um and I'm looking at what you got here and I kinda of, we, we, we talked a little bit about it not a whole lot because you get a committee and everything. Uh, with the survey, couldn't the perk test be done and that would cover your uh, soil needs same time? I, again, I, some of the soil stuff, it could, they don't need to survey the whole place for soil. Right. So as I understand, is if, if you're going to lay a concrete foundation somewhere, that's kind of where they want to know what kind of soil, whether the soil is going to shift so that you don't get like station so, one that settles 
Right. So that's where yeah, they're trying to park that right there. So that's where you may have you may have to do some core sample to okay. find out what's you know, yeah, we want to put the pavilion here, but what kind of soil do we have? And do we have do we have to reinforce it? Do we have to bring stuff? That's the kind of stuff that you might have. Um, that would, it would also be needed if you were going to do a skate park because again, yeah. your cement, all that kind of stuff, they don't want that stuff shifting on you. So they need to know the type of soil. So a soccer field, they may not need to have nearly as much, you know, but there's going to be some landscaping. You can't have a soccer field that's tilted. You got to. Uh, well, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Chip. I'm all for a park, and this is my opinion because of what happened last year. Because, you know, the ball, you know, school's not allowing the kids to play anywhere. Yeah, my kids are It's right still now. not, and they haven't even got back to us. We tried to get a hold of the superintendent now for almost six months of parks. Yeah. And they've not even reached back to us about allowing the kids to play, even play ball out there or anything. So, for me, I wouldn't support that 100% because I love it from the side. You know, well, thank you. you. I appreciate is, that. Is there any issue with the land? Oh, yes, it's on the Shapley Trust, part of the Shapley Trust. Mm -hmm. Again, it shouldn't be. It was given to the transfer station. Mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. schools came out of the Shapley Trust. Yep. This place came out of the Shapley Trust. But it may need to be sold and then the proceeds put into the Shapley Trust. Yeah, I don't know how the transfer mm -hmm. Yeah, I, don't, it, and I, we, I think it's up to us at the cost that it's sold after we, you know. And then it would have to be paid for by the town well, or anything. And then the money put into the shack. You know what I'm saying? Like to make sure yeah, it's, it's illegal. Yep, 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 yep. But, yeah. but no, I think it's I think it's a great idea. Like you said, you know, you know, somebody who's got kids, three yeah. and four, they, they can't go to school during the day. No. You know? I and, think that would be an awesome it would be a great thing to that could an area to bring the town together even. You know, yeah. we could hold the Lebanon Festival there. Yeah. I think in the day it used to be called uh Lebanon Day. You guys remember that? And then you said the cow on the field <laughs> with the squares. <laughs> now let's bring the cow back. <laughs> oh, I think I think it's a great idea. Yeah. You know, again, yeah. Veterans Day, Memorial Day, you said it's here, yeah. you're over there, you have the stage, yeah. you can do it, you know, again, where it's Lebanon Day Festival, you can do there, you can do Easter egg hunts there, you can do your your uh, trick or treat, trunk or treat over there, you can do every you know, again, if we have a Christmas, if we have a pine tree that we leave there, you could have your Christmas tree lighting ceremony there. I mean, all this stuff. Well, and yes, a hundred percent. And if the land mm -hmm. couldn't be sold or conveyed some way, if there's timber on the land, we could even maybe find that someone with a sawmill that would cut the timber up. I thought about that for the yeah. pavilion. Right? Yeah, we could use would that. Yeah. Would that be cool? Right. The, the, the yeah. timber from the place is used to build the stage. Right. So then we just need the, the volunteer people and the. the Screw guns and the screws. Yeah. To create the stage. I'm just I'm, I'm just for not having the bag the school district will allow our kids to play. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only one the I, one thing I would say, and I'll tell you this from I had a conversation with some veterans, and I think this is really, really important to know. The park needs to be um received well and wanted to be used by the people because one of the veterans concern. Is you put a veterans memorial behind the transfer station, behind the schools, however you want to say it, but you're not going to really see it much from the road, and it's forgotten about. Yep. Okay, it's kind of stuck in the middle of the woods and forgotten about. That's a big concern with the veterans. Well, I totally, we, I totally get it. If we put it on the ballot, yeah. we'll know. We'll know. Well, right. well my, my point right. is, is that if you're going to do a park. If, I think they're fine if the park is used and has attendance and people like it. So if it's a usable park, so it, and it can't be half assed But if you do a half assed right. thing, it's not going to. That's, that's, that's my yeah, point. I agree with you. And it's it's got to be a decent product so that people will use it. Yeah. Right. And when, our initially, we want to grow it to, in a way that it's self sustaining, too. Like it's an area that if you have a baby shower, you know, you could maybe rent out the pavilion yeah. to have your baby shower or, you that's, know, that's something. A great idea. We could put a little trailer. Concession stand outside with hot chocolate for ice cream. Well, we can take the concession stand that yeah, Georgie we, built over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. right. yeah, exactly. You know, they can sell hot chocolates. Yep. You know, we could mound up snow and have a snow hill there. There's tons and tons of things that we could do for the town, and I think that would be so beneficial for the people here. This this town is growing, and it's growing with a lot of younger people. Yeah, well, I don't have kids, but I got grandkids. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, <laughs> bring them to the park. Show in the park for the gifts. Well, thank you all. I, yeah. I appreciate very much. You yeah, let me ask one more question. You did have to, uh, 
states here on page five of that document that you have. Yep. Here, that the state trustees and their successors in office shall have the authority and power to sell, convey, any part or the whole of said property, known as the Chaffee Farm. And the proceeds thereof shall continue to be administered as part of the trust under the same terms and conditions. So, so we don't need, we can sell up that piece right off. Sell for a buck, whatever. Yeah, whatever, right. Whatever, right. right. Yeah. And then put the money into the trust, yeah. And then we just got to figure out how to raise money to get and put that on the ballot to get the survey and stuff. Well, and I think, I, I think the idea of the Shafter Trust, it says to benefit the poor and the indigent, but it really is to benefit the town as well. So using some of that land and still having the, the money in there, you know, it would be, and you're talking about people who maybe can't afford to go to go the bowl like or things like that. Or things like that. Yeah, you know, somebody that doesn't, walks over with their kids because they can't afford to go to Sanford and take their kids to the movies because they don't have a lot of money. So in that respect, it, it would be benefiting the needy of the town and yeah. people that don't have a lot of money. And then uh, you can do what the shipyard does. Is, uh, they get these blow up outdoor driving things. They just go right out there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. They do it in the baseball field. I'm not surprised. We try to figure out where he's going. I was yeah. saying, they pull blow up, right? <laughs> <laughs> I walked all in the room. I thought he was going to say, come on. Adult recreation. All right. All right. So I didn't articulate correct. All right, well, thank you so much. Hey, thank you guys. I, I appreciate it so much. You want, the, you, know. you want the referendum language, but maybe just change instead of shouting? Oh, yeah, you already have yeah, that? We, yeah, we, that was my end of it. We printed out a referendum question. Instead of shouting, trusting, putting double fund or undesignated, whatever. Yep. Right, so. One, two, three, four, five. So I was the GM at the beginning. You started this. Oh, yeah, we moved oh, right way back when I was the GM. So uh, I've seen what you've done and how far you come with the familiar thing. You guys as a whole have done a great job. I appreciate it. Good job. Well, so, has well, 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 job. We're hoping it moves forward so that yeah. we can form an official committee. Oh. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this would be the yeah. if if it's a, it's an approval, then right. this would be the next step would be to form a formal committee yeah. Yeah, to do the next stage. Yeah, I've been in contact with some people that have created parks over in Berwick about creating a master plan. So we're kind of hoping it gets, gets goes through. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you again. I'm just gonna say it publicly now. Uh, Man, so if they have money for um, parks Who? that they Who give does? the communities. County Drug Command. No, no, Count, County Drug County Command. Drug it's a, oh, it's yep. a federal guard program. Oh, yeah. And a, it's a joint program. They, they put money out and they have money specifically set aside for parks. And there may be some grants out there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Star grants. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, again, one of, the, one of the discussions that we've had, and again, it doesn't really matter now, but we need to get. But and then different towns, different towns have done these things, but you have to have a, there's an issue about a nonprofit, right? So, because if we're trying to solicit donations, where's that nonprofit? So if we created a nonprofit, now you have donations come to the nonprofit, they can take a deduction. So it may be a, a nonprofit for, for the park. So it's just different things like that that we have to figure out what's going to be the best way. But I mean, we can't even do any kind of fundraising because we don't know what the cost is. So what do we... What are we going to fund with? So we can't just tell them if you have a master plan that has pictures and mm -hmm. uh, they can visualize it, they can see it, then it's a little bit right. better. Can answer some I'll, uh, for the committee, if, when this goes through, I'll, I'll pay the you know, corporation fee for the nonprofit. Yep. Uh, it's yeah. relatively inexpensive. I'll, you know, it won't cost the town pay or anything, tax pays, there's nothing. I'll, I'll just write a check for them. Well, you are incredibly kind. Thank you. I am incredibly kind. People don't know that because they just think I'm a mean person. Oh, I haven't got that bad. Bad. <laughs> you know, I just oh, I did. Well, thank you all so much. Thank, thank you very much. This was, this was a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you again. Uh, and just so you know, online, if you go out to the corporation papers for the state of Maine, it's 150 to five. Thank you, right. sir. Yep. Yeah, thank you all. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Oh, nice, Thank you, everyone. Triple five. Nice to meet you, Daddy. She does, doesn't she? Yeah. I almost thought she was at first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
No, we're, we're, we're done with the agenda. We're going to old business next Friday. Uh, could I ask you if I could please skip over your old business and do good at the town first? Well, I guess I'm already made. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're I'm, not I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm not being rude. No, I know you're not. So, Ken. <clears throat> you had a better offer. I did have a better offer. Right. You got to wait for that. So, I just told him I needed to be in the show. And he just didn't I listen. Already he told did not him. listen to you, did he? He did. You know, your bladder falls. All right, go ahead. He already knows. Okay. So apparently they tried to do a USDA food giveaway over at Neville High School today, um, and they did not give away um, all their boxes. And they have 200 boxes, four pallets of food sitting in the parking lot at Neville High School that needs immediate pickup. I contacted, said, called me, which is why I kept running in and out. I called Eddie B. Eddie B is ready to rock and roll and he's got somebody going over. I have to go over. James is gonna go over. We're gonna move all those two hundred boxes. What we're, gonna we're, gonna you guys. we're gonna have them to give away at Eddie B's in the morning. So I hope everybody will come. I'll put that out there tonight. Um, so we have two hundred USDA boxes plus two pallets of milk, cheese, and butter. So we've got a lot of stuff to move tonight. Um I also just want to quick remind everybody, blood drive is at station one on Saturday. You have to have an appointment. You should blood drive out or online at www.redcross.org or 1-800-RED-CROSS. Make your appointment. Um, we're serving lunch, chicken soup, and sandwiches tomorrow. So I hope everybody will come and get blood. Um, Lebanon's been doing fantastic, and I want to continue that. Also tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, Matt Leggett is hosting his second uh, ice skating Saturday. Saturday, I'm sorry, I said tomorrow, Saturday. Also Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., Matt Leggett's hosting his second uh, town ice skating party. Everybody's welcome. He's got hot dogs, hamburgers, s'mores, coffee, cocoa, everything else, all free. Stop by. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not you, me. I'm sorry. No, no, no. And um, everybody's welcome, and I hope everybody... Will come, Jeff. I will get your thing up as soon as I get home tonight, and I think that that's and that's everything for me. James and I will be taking our leave. I'll call you for what I want for a fee and everything that we're going to need. Uh, it's going to be like seventy-five bucks a kid. I think they said so. Okay. And then uh, I think I'll, I'll try to do it like the tourist thing. Yeah. I think it's either the end of February, first week of March. I'll look at the dates. So. Okay. Uh, tell everybody, uh, Lynn, tomorrow all your people. Uh, come get a food box. It'll be we'll be at Eddie B's giving them up. Did anybody need to go? Love you guys. Bye, Deborah. Deborah. Yeah. 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 What time's the giveaway? Uh, I don't know. You got about it like ten, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's say let's say we'll start giving them away at ten okay. tomorrow morning. <laughs> And uh, go until home. they're gone. There's 200 boxes <clears throat> plus milk, eggs, and cheese, and butter. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Where is it again? Eddie B's. 
Is all the color drop place? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Right up here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Right, old business LED light project. Have you heard anything from Penny Bob? I have not. I haven't reached out to them yet. Yeah. Yeah. Going on. So, uh, I'll do that this week. But. Uh, recycling. Still work. Did, did you hear anything from an Eco Main? I mean, what are you asking and talking to them about? Yeah, I have heard back a little bit. I'm still working with them a little bit. Well, why are you working with them? Do you think that you could try to start separating the tag away? Um, I'm hoping to go in another week. I gotta to talk to the waste manager and I'll try to finish up the people about that. What did I talk to him last week? Pretty lengthily. If you have any questions, yeah, I don't. Not for them yet. Why do you say you have to talk to waste management? After I talked to, after I finished talking to them. I mean, I think we should start doing the category. Start separating it, and we would start saving money, and we give it a shot. Well, where are we gonna put it? In that second where we used to have. Um, we lost money when it was there because it always came. Yeah, but we we would be. I talked to waste management quite lengthy last week, and they said that if we trans, I mean, uh, converted that second dumpster over like we had single stream yeah. into cardboard, and first it, we could actually probably. Break even or at least make a little bit of money so on that. They said the same thing to us before. They kept on checking. They charged, the way the contract's written for you, they charged $180 to haul. Yeah, they're still going to do that anyway. Right. And cardboard has an extreme bounce back. The compactors don't compact it extremely tight, and they need to call ahead of time. So it creates several issues up there. One is the containers can't be moved. And um, Mr. Patch says that. Only having one dumpster for household waste with the amount of volume they're doing right now creates a terrible issue at sometimes two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon where they cannot get the containers removed. So therefore, like in the past, even with two dumpsters going, two compactors going, they have to use them. They have well, to we, use them. We would be we would be you putting less in that dumpster though, where we would be separating the cardboard out. And he also said you'd have no charge giving us a container up there for glass. It'd be in that glass is very heavy, and that would be taking it out of our regular waste stream as well. Yeah, but the glass won't be compacted, so no, it won't be compacted. So it's you're going to take bottles, dumpster. right? But you're going to take bottles that are like this that don't get crushed, and so you're getting another hundred eighty dollar haul fee on the glass that's not crushed down. Whereas basically, it's very heavy, right? But when it, it, it it's irrelevant though when it goes into the other one gets compacted down, and we all pay by the hall fee. And again, there's great concern with the transfer station people right now, the way it's constructed, that they don't get things picked up on time. So we'll be closing the transfer station early on several days and creating a big issue. So it's, it's big. I, and I think, switching. you know, the, the issues that we had before were around the really heavy times, like Christmas time and when we had a lot of garbage. I mean, we really need to start looking at doing some some recycling and looking at ways to save I mean, money. I agree. And, and he said this would definitely into, be a way we could save money. I'm sure it would, but it, rushing into things is... It, it, if you We're not it, rushing. We shut up the, 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 the recycling a year and a half ago. Right. Well, if you could give me a couple more weeks, I'd appreciate it. So. Rewrite solid waste ordinance. Still in the works. Timber value, which is in here. Employee reviews, we can take those off, correct? Right? Yeah. I have actually wanted to, um, I probably shouldn't do this right now, should I? Are we have an executive? Yes, we have. Let's do it then. Okay. You can take off my. Cheers. Oh, yeah, that's all. That's great. Oh, that was great, by the way. Powerport info for fire. How are you doing on that, Jeff? Well, I talked to them a little bit before he left. He went, um, what was it, like two weeks ago, I think he we went back to one of the four days. Two weeks ago? Yeah. Last, this week yeah, was the last two days ago. Was it tomorrow? Yeah. Whatever. The class before he went back to four days. And uh, we're going to get together and uh, JT's going to put something together. So I want to understand. Nice. So, Good work, Jeff. Nice. I didn't hear anything. That's all the fire department. Jeez, man. And JT, they get all the credit. 
electrician, lights, or anything you want to They're working on it. We have the one um, that's coming in. He came in yesterday. Jen went in and he did something. He's putting together a quote. He's the only um, efficiency main person that's gotten back to us that has time to come in. Okay. So far. So. All right. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He said he was going to be touching base with you guys. Yeah. Well, I guess he fixed one of them yesterday, right? He put something in. I'm in that bathroom. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I would have came in and met him, but I had an appointment yesterday. Did he say that it would, it could just be relamped? He just showed me, like, what the original one looks like and what they put in. So, and that, he took pictures of it and he said he was going to touch base. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he, wants to, re something yeah. he wants to redo them all to be energy efficient because he said they were, you get all your money back just button, basically. 75%. Right? Yeah, 75 to 80%. So he said it's actually cheaper and they do it purposely. They make it cheaper to replace them to the energy efficient so that you do it. Yep. So it's cheaper to do that than fix what we have out there. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Individual swapping items, Mr. Adam? Me first, huh? <laughs> wow. All right, yeah, I, got, I just uh, put it out there. Uh, we are going to be a group. I, I got the information today that the season is going to happen this year. Um, so I'm going to start sign up. So I'm going to try to do it the first week in March. Season starts in May. We'll be using the Stewart Field. Um, age groups 13 to 15. You gonna be coaching? I will be coaching until I get some other coaches to take the job, so we can just reestablish the program. Um, and then uh, just keep your eye out on uh, Facebook or whatever for the posts that we're doing it. It looks like it's gonna be uh, kind of the same league it was Southern Maine, uh, York County, Babe Ruth. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Southern Maine, Babe Ruth. I'm sorry. Um, but there are some teams from Fort Smith that actually will be playing because they want to join and play us as well. So um, we'll see what happens. Um, they haven't played. Lebanon hasn't had a team for three years, I think, or four years. Last time they won quite a bit, didn't they? Yes, they yes we did. <laughs> Were yeah. you coach that team? I did, me and Mike Chambers. Mike Chambers, uh, <laughs> two of us, and Mike finished after I did because I went off to the American Legion program and then college but my chambers I think got six or seven championships in a row nice. the eleven kids so shout out for the eleven kids so yeah so this kid probably carried the team that kid played for me oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> so no but it was Maddie Maddie played man yeah. because he finished Maddie with Maddie ball. yeah Maddie was a good ball player um but I had uh, the old boys and they uh, we went on to the Legion and the Coast Legion and then we went on to college and most of those kids that we had a good chunk of them played in a small conference for college, so, which was nice. So. But yeah, right now I'm just going to be the inaugural coach, and hopefully I get, I get some people to step up and help out. Matt Leggett said he would help um, with his wife's permission. <laughs> um, and then I got a couple kids that played baseball for me in the past that are older grown men now, um, like close to 30 I guess now, that said they'd come out and help as well to get it rolling. Mr. Adams. The old man? My father? No. Uh, oh, Dave? Dave is the, he's actually the uh, York County, uh, Big Hawk, Southern Maine, Babe Ruth president of the yeah. league. You can get him to work with the pitches. Yeah, I'd love to, but he's going to do South Burrow this year. That's what he told me until he gets replacement coach. Yeah, I know. It's all right, though. Dave's a good guy. Uh, that's it. Just uh, keep your eye open. We are going to do the Babe Ruth this year. We're going to raise some money. Um, and then, uh, you know, we're going to hopefully put a season together without too many restrictions. Karina? Um, I, I'm not sure you got a chance to ch check this out, Jeff. Uh, I gave paperwork to everybody last week about the uh, um, Senior Property Tax Assistance Program. From Elliot? Yep, they just passed in Elliot. Yep. Um, and would like to put something on the ballot for, for Lebanon's people that we are... You know, we could do this as a municipality to help out our seniors that need um, assistance with their tax bills. I'm all for that, but we still got to follow. Um, that's brand new, but like the thing we brought up last year, again, when I was chairman, about the uh, new state laws that have changed for elderly certain age. So, you know, 
maybe hold that move for DHS. So I will look at that. Um, I, I read a little bit of it. Um, I didn't really see that in there. Um, so what kind of percentage is it? Off? Well, that's what we have to discuss. We gotta figure out the impact. Well, the here's what's, what's going to happen with taxes. Huh? Um, the homestead rate's going to go up. Veterans rates are going up, and that's you know depending on age. And they got that new law for the elderly that you can't even foreclose on. Yep. Um, you have to go to DHS if you can't get a hold of them. So that's the stuff we gotta look at it before we. Yep. You know, that's right. Well, you're gonna I believe that's what you get to set up a fund. And then they I do know that there's there is a um I, I thought I copied it to everybody before. There's a um I think it's Gilmington, New Hampshire that just passed um a law to help tax relief in elderly. But what they do is they don't actually set up a fund, but they will just give like an abatement to a to um the elderly. It, depending on the value of their property and you know the age and, and whatnot, and I can give you a copy of that. Where, where the, it, say everybody who's elderly, you get fifteen percent off or a fifteen percent abatement. That comes right out of the tax revenue, which means it's an increase of fifteen percent for everybody who's not elderly. Right. right. But these are people that aren't using the school system that 80% of our taxes go to. But what about when they get, and I'm not against helping the elderly or anything like that. That's not my point. And that's one of the reasons I think we need to keep the tax rate as low as possible so people on fixed incomes don't lose their homes. But I think if you look at some of the other towns that have a much higher uh, mill rate, those are the ones probably helping in that situation. With our mill rate where it is, it's unfair. So if someone's 68 and they put five kids through our school system and now they're on the other end, you know, they use our school systems. And if people use the school systems in the past, they're going to use them or are using them, you know, that's the reason that we need. I think the better way would be to try to figure out how we get the school board to cut the school budget a little bit. That's, that's my opinion, because that money's got to come from somewhere. It just doesn't vanish. I, I did have one other thing. And then uh, is he done? Well, I was going to ask Paul how he felt about No, my, my, my concern is, I mean, I'm, I'm in the older age, too. But, but the... I love how we put that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll show you the one that they did in, in I think it was Gilmington. I, I just don't want to shift much from one I'm not sure, Chuck. I didn't check the mill rate in Gillington, but the um, I, I really believe though that once you're in a fixed income like that, it would help the elderly. Oh, it's definitely, help. definitely, you know, the people that are in a fixed income, those are the ones that. Sometimes we're I'm having a tough time well, keeping that out. The fairest way would be if you Excuse go to the school with tax books. Oh, okay, I thought you were going to say that. That when, once you reach that age of a fixed income, I think those are the people that we really need help to help. Right now, I know of my mother's kids. When she did her tax, so she got back tax for tax from the state. Uh, the, 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 what's the program called? I forget the name of it. I know what you mean. Yeah. But it's the state reimbursement. Like part of the, uh, you get some of the applicants because they're low income. So that, that's, a, that's a big problem. So. And, and this program is definitely for the very low income. Yes. Very low income. But, and yes. very elderly, you know, like. Like the one in Elliot that stops at 70. And it, that's not yeah, really No, I'm just saying it stops at 70, which they're on a fixed income, and it also is income based. So it's for the very needy, which I can't imagine a whole huge, there's going to be a huge percentage in Lebanon, but it would help the ones that need it. We have the poverty base, and Gilmington's mill rate is 25. 
Ours is 15. So. They're New Hampshire, too. I thought it was 25 meters flag for a minute, but I could have been wrong. I was thinking. Ours? I looked at no, no, the only thing. 24 point eight. Okay. I was looking at, I knew it was something like that because I was looking at property up there. Yeah. So, I mean, their mill rate is extremely high. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. It was like 10 bucks plus more than ours. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're not getting almost. Oh, yeah. So, there's more services than we do as well. Well, they are a different time. No, they have more services, too. Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, I did want to thank Scotty for getting getting right back to the people um, with the mailboxes versus plow truck issue. Um, talked about the elderly, um, and I also wanted to talk about this huge pile of complaints and letters that we got this week that address the um, some of the. the it, um, I wasn't here. I don't think Paul was here either that week. Um, that the, there was an issue brought up in with Miss um, Kyle Simmons during a regular meeting, which really had nothing to do with the uh, town of Lebanon or any issues within our authority. And it just seems like a lot of times these meetings. We're not we're not doing a lot of business in the meetings. That um, and issues are being brought up that have nothing to do with Lebanon. And I really think we need to focus a little bit more on getting stuff done in town and less on outside issues. Well, there's no time limit on a meeting, so all business or anything that needs to be addressed gets addressed, Mister. That Simon's is a taxpayer and he has to be heard. It was a political issue. Yeah, it, Nobody, it, it wasn't a town issue, though. Let me finish. This is a political body in a political atmosphere. He's a taxpayer. He felt he has to be heard. Um, it wasn't explained to us, and we don't know whether he's innocent or guilty. It wasn't like he sat here and said, or phoned in and said, that he was assaulting people. He painted a completely different picture. And I didn't have a problem with a taxpayer. I had a conversation with him beforehand. Please keep it to five minutes. This is public participation for a reason. Um, and I think that in the future, again, I, as chairman, would allow someone to speak from the town. Um, I mean, your friend Terry went on and on for an hour and a half. And your cousin, Mr. Gilpatrick, went on and on. Those are town issues. Those are town issues. Those are town issues. issues. They're personal issues. But, um, well, how do you feel about it? address that, that too, then? I think he's a taxpayer. He has to speak. It's public participation. It's a government body. And that's where it was spoken on that. So why would it be, I mean, no different than them, you know, any of them call in. They can, they can speak, too, on the public participation. or come in and do it. So, I mean, we can't start picking and choosing who can and can't. Be in public participation if they're taxpayers. We just can't do that. We do that with censoring. And I'm not a big fan of censoring anybody. And I am 100% a big, huge supporter of the First Amendment as well. So he has the right to speak in a public meeting, in a public forum, in the town that he pays taxes in. That's the reality. That's any of them do, in my opinion. I, I agree. Paul? I have an issue with it as well. Um, my issue is more of the comments that were made here at the table after. Because that was taken as a board action. Okay. So when the comments came back, it wasn't specific. It just said, select board. So all you have to against the select board. And I'm sorry, I, I don't appreciate being dragged into something that I didn't agree with. Right. What comments are you talking about? Just so you, the complaints that we got back from. You want me to read some? That's right, you want to read them, but just, just, just the, the reaction that the public picked up on. They, they, they just blamed what the Oh, no, I, yeah, I, I guess guess that, what do you think he should not have been allowed to speak? I'm not, I don't have a problem with speaking, but I don't think we should comment. We should, don't think we should comment. Okay. Not even as an individual, because once you, as an individual response, it's the whole board. Okay. And if the whole board doesn't agree, then. 
it, it, and that was another part, part of it is um, I think when there's a, a, a major issue like that, when we're getting backlash like that, that probably we should have had a meeting and discussed it before you went on TV and talked about it. Because it, you you really weren't representing the whole board. Well, you weren't. And I, I, I just think every time you step in front of a camera, it's the whole board. Okay, that's you, getting you, just out, you didn't have that problem writing that letter to select what we call. I wrote that well, when I wrote that letter was like Cole was also was one of the TV issues where you went on TV. But you had no problem putting that. But you had. Press. Will you let me finish? I'm just saying. Please. Is my time? Yeah, you can speak all you want. Yeah, well, you can let me speak. It would be nice. I can't speak. You cannot yell at me, please. Keep a civil tone. Okay, so again, you Terry's issue. You took it upon yourself and you never even told any of us that you did a TV interview that day. I don't feel the need to report to you. One. You don't have to report to me, but when you're you... asking me to, and the lawyer called me and talked about it. So Well, I, I think I would like to make a motion that if there's any issues like this, that we meet as a board before we speak to any any media. Can I get a second for that? I can't second that because the circumstances, they, they want to talk to somebody immediately. And, and normally it's always been the chair that, that receives it. This is supposed to be. We do not have a public. What we call them. A PR person? Maybe we should because it's really making us look bad when we're allowing people to speak on their own. I didn't say anything controversial about that. And what I said was, <clears throat> he didn't talk about assaulting anybody. And I talked about the friendly. So you, you did not take any of my quotes and pull anything out of them that I supported him and his actions. I did not. I supported him being allowed to speak here at the meeting. And I would allow anybody to speak here at the meeting. Like I said, your friend Terry came in and ripped me apart for an hour and a half. I let her speak. You had no problem with that. You your cousin came in. You do what you want. Yeah, but I'm just saying you had no problem with that. Your cousin came in and ripped me apart for an hour and a half. And I tried stopping him up on that too. Okay. All right. Anything else? <clears throat> um, I went to the fire department today. They have a plumbing problem. Um, and we trace it to the what we believe the entrance to the septic. Um, that was pumped before they did the work. I think there's something that's clogging right at the lip of the septic. So tomorrow, the guys are going to pull the cover off and look in and we'll take the entry point off and see. Um, I told them I like, checked tonight about them buying a, um, a snake, like the, the powerful one. It'll cost about 150 bucks, but something they should have there if we call a plumber if they don't. We don't have that if they need that. We're talking three hundred dollars just to have a come. And the way these guys are doing things on their own, a piece of equipment like that would be cost saving to save money just this time. We can establish what the problem is and they even if they need to use it. So I don't know them. how the board feels about that. Can we send a plumber inspector to check it out? Plumber inspector? Yeah, we have two of them. I teach it now. Don't you have a plumber? Um, not um, vehicle at the time. Oh, not one. No, I explained to them how to figure it out. That's why I went down there before the meeting. So, my point is, they may need, if they open up the drain after they let it sit, they may need to buy a sink. But they will know exactly where the, where the blockage is. When they open that up, but they need to wait a day to open it up. And when they pull the cover off, they're looking in. So if they need a safe, they will know it won't just be to buy one and not need one. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very simple process. Yeah, it's coming in, it's coming in from, it's backing up. Every drain, they, every faucet they run, it backs up to the shower, which is the lowest drain point. Mm -hmm. So after they let it, 
was settled for a day, they can open the access point where it leaves the building and see if there's water in there. And if there's not, they can run water and see if it's coming by there. And if it's coming by there, that means the blockage is in that eight foot tube out to the septic. We don't, we don't have the tank itself. It's, it's full. Flood. No, the tank is, was pumped. No, no, but is it flooded? No. They don't, we don't know that yet, but they're going to pull the cover off tomorrow. Because it, that's the third one I've listened to in the last couple of weeks where the big field went open. Yeah, because maybe it's frozen. Yeah. But they will know tomorrow they're going to pull the cover off first. And if the tank's not overflowing and if there's no blockage to that, they're going to open up the other one. And then depending on where the water's flowing, they may need to go get a power sink. But they're not going to buy it until they open the tank mm -hmm. and they do the other thing. I don't have a problem with saying that. It's a public building, maybe we borrow, borrow it. Well, that's what I said. We can use it at the town hall, we can use it at the field station, we can use it wherever you need. At Jeff's house. <laughs> yeah, but, but I am concerned with the fact that if they had a pump in the staff, they might have more of this Yes. I'm hoping that's not that. Mm -hmm. that. That's the third one on the last two weeks. Yeah. It happened to me a couple of years ago. No, individual selectors can um, can you still on that? Sure. We've got to call yeah, is, is, for us. I was gonna I'm I'm gonna say, that's all I had to talk about. Well, do you have a lot because I just want to bring something up real quick. I got lots to bring. Okay. Uh um, <laughs> you, you need a third third both one or two. Um snake? Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you make a motion? Yeah, I make a motion that if the fire department needs to purchase our snake. They'd be allowed to do that. One second. We'll get it for money. Yeah. Not through 150. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Isn't that the chief's? The chief's not here. Go ahead, sir. Okay, real quick question. Um, maybe uh, you can help me with this next. What is the policy on. Um, Absentee ballots here in town. That's actually a card picture. Oh. What do you mean in, as far as what? Well, I just want to, you yeah. know, make sure that, you know, I mean, because I was the one that was talking to the state last election where people weren't getting the absentee ballots and whatnot and all this other stuff, right? I reported on that. Um, so what I want to do is I want to um, make a motion. I don't even know if I can but I want to make a motion where if people want absentee ballots, they have to request them. And then not, they, they do not automatically get mailed out to them. They have to be verified based on the current policy we have. You should bring the area yeah. for that. They yeah. do. Right. Yeah. Currently now, you need to request one. Yeah. 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 You yeah. do. Yeah. Right. No, no, I know. But, I mean, is that set in stone? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's That was a referendum years ago, right? That don't change, right? I mean, that's what I'm getting at. So I'd like to see that. State, it is state a state control, state state control. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the town has the can't override the states mm -hmm. in that one. They're in the last. They do it with a written form or something that they email the right. register and request it, but they have to have one. Yeah. And that is yeah. under review right now, isn't it? Well, that's why I'm concerned because um, it's going to cost us as a town a bunch of money if, in fact, they do what they're saying they, got, they want to do. With home rule, can we I can't override that? I, I don't know. I just think it's going to cost the town a lot of money. We don't have. We have a hard enough time taking care of the elections we do have. And now they're saying everybody in the towns that have just proposed kind of interest are going to have to pay for somehow everybody automatically get absentee balance mailed to them automatically. I don't think that's. No, no. They want to get rid of that. Just no, no. When they first. You're asking for your From what I read from the MMA paper, it said you request the first half and two thousand, then you can make that an automatic in the final. Right, but that's that's not. Oh, that's so you not, request to not have to request in the future. Right, right but that's not just mailed out to everybody. Okay. The way the state is trying to write the law right now, and this is where it's going to cost us money. That's why we need to head this off before it comes election time. It's the same. We automatically, as a town, will mail everybody absentee ballots automatically, no matter what. And we have to pay for those ballots and the mailing fees. And I think we should not have to do that on a state-mandated thing 
and there's got to be something that protects us and our tax base from having to pay for these things. And, you know, because you know what happened? I mean, you guys know I was dealing with the last time we had problems with absentee ballots, you know, to the point where I talked to the Secretary of State and everybody that was involved, and, you know, the, they had to come and literally pick them up and make sure they got up because of this happening with the mailing. I just think it's going to cost us money we don't have. Maybe, maybe we need to look at it seriously. Maybe it's something we can talk to Ted about. See what I, I, would, I would think so, but yeah, I. That's a little bit more what you're doing. Not here, not this big. No. But if it's going to cost the town money, a lot of money from what they're saying, how is that not relevant to the town? Well, it's relevant for sure. But the yeah. question is whether we can legally do it. I think we're going to have to. can't put it in the office. Kind of have to uh, well, it was not a state law yet. They're trying to get it passed, but I mean, but that's going to really hurt Lebanon's yeah. bottom line in a lot of these small towns. You got to pay for all the fees and everything. Employees, for everything. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll talk to you. I will talk to the. I will talk to the to the uh, our rep first, then on that. Um, I just want to make sure everybody in the town and everybody at this board that's currently sitting on this board is aware. is aware of what's going on and it could potentially cost the town thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in fees mm -hmm. across the board. Even research Rafferty. Uh, Rafferty was low. Well. I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. Rafferty, he's reached out to him. No, Senator Rafferty? Yeah. 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 Joe. Yeah. Coach Joe, I coached against him. Beat them. We had the little kids years ago. <laughs> He's a decent guy. He is. I should reach out to him. He sent me a letter the other day. I was torn up. What's it? I think it was a generic letter sent to all, all uh, elected officials. Oh my God, it's right in my eyes. Yeah, like, well, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think, think, uh, I think that uh, that particular thing is going to cost a lot of the small towns like ours in the state of Maine ridiculous amounts of money we don't have. Just another crazy mandate that. Do they want everyone to move out of Maine? I'm not sure why they're doing it. But the other thing, I have to say, like something. Yeah. Anything else, Jeff? No, I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. All right. Buckle down. What's that, Paul? This is just the uh, thing up from last night. The world last night. Yeah, the world last night. The budget meeting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Well, that was interesting meeting last night. I watched the whole thing. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> well, let me rephrase that. I watched it when I got home. I got home all the way. I watched it from there on. It was interesting to say the least. Okay, as I explained last night, this <clears throat> this is to cover the over expenditures for legal transfer station fire rescue. And cemetery from the 2019-2020 budget. The amounts that you see here are as of February 9, 2021. The over expenditures are $26,404.29 for legal, $10,637.11 for transfer, $6,840.62 for fire rescue, $2,211.29. For cemeteries, for a total of $46,093.51. As of uh, now, in the contingency, there is $5,550.52. There is a surplus in codes and land use of $4,675.07. And in highway department, there's a surplus of $36,198.58.
making a total of $46,424.17. The highway department surplus of $36,198 was on the ballot last June for uh, authorization to use that money, actually up to $75,000 to cover unexpended balances, overexpended balances, I'm sorry. So that was approved by the voters. The crows and land use surplus of $4,675. Looking to um, be, as a board, move $17,900 to that account last March to cover, cover my expenses in that area. I would like to make an action to refund the surplus of that 17900 put it back into contingency, and that will bring contingency up to $10,225. That's my goal. So I have two motions to make. First one is to make a motion to refund $4,675. I'll give this to you. I'll sorry. I'll make a motion to refund $4,675.07 from the $17,900 moved from contingency to land use on March 5th, 2020, by vote of the select board back to contingency. I'll second that. Um, discussion? All in favor? With that action, that brings contingency up to $9,894.57. I make a motion to use uh, fiscal year 2019-20 funds $9,894.57 from contingency, $36,198.58 from highway to cover the following expenditures. Legal, $26,404.29. Transfer statement $10,637.11. <coughs> Fire and rescue $6,320.62. And cemetery $2,211.29. We'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? On February 2016, the properties that have not paid their 2018 taxes will be foreclosed on. Past practice has been that the board considered granting a grace, a grace period after that for folks to still make the payment. But the property will be owned by the town on the 16th of February. I, I, so we did this last year. Yes, we did. One of the caveats to it is that they pay once they go, if they owe for three years, once they go past this February 16th date, when we make this decision to allow them the grace period, they need to pay all their back taxes. That's a promise. No, but that, that was what it was last year. Right, and that's not my proposal for this year. Okay, that's what I was going to say. I don't like that at all. No, no I, okay. I'll let you finish. I'm sorry, I should interrupt. No problem. Because of COVID in this situation, I was going uh, to request that we only do it for one year. Yes, 100%. But, but that's one year, then they have still to pay the late charges and the lien fees. Filing the lien fees. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Filing the fees. There you go. That, that was my, my intention. That's, yeah. I don't know the fact that they have to come up with three years. What, how many properties are there? 23, I think you're going to That's a record for us, isn't it? Yeah. It's pretty nice. But down from it where it was last week. <laughs> still got five more days and the law is still paid last minute. So. Yeah. The flyers helped a lot. They yeah. did. Thank you for being like my line. Yeah. Taking it away from you. 
No, I guess <laughs> not. And that is a nicety. I checked with MMA. Oh, yeah, it's not a requirement. It's not a requirement. You, it was a good thing you guys do. And you got a lot of people to pay, so it was well worth it. I'm spending the time. Yeah. So thank you guys for doing that. I have to say, because like I said, it's not a requirement of the treasurer's job, and you, you and Stacy went above and beyond. So thank you both for doing that. And like the when Did you, you do that on your own time? No, no, but I mean, they, it started at 38 yeah. residents, yeah. and it's down to no, it's how many? 23? Did you 20, think 23 of those? 23, so 22 oh, well. in a few minutes, hopefully. So, a lot of people that's good came in and caught up. So, thank you. So, we need a motion, yeah. We gotta do it. Okay, I'd like to make a motion. As of February 16, 2021, to allow the prior owners of the proposed property to redeem the property by paying the 2018 taxes in full payment, including all late charges and lien filings, I pay no later than March 29, 2021, at 4 p.m., by cash or certified funds. I'll second that. I'll do something. Okay. Discussion? Yeah. Just, uh, didn't you say you wanted to give them a year? You know, they have to pay a year. Pay a year, is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, one, one year. Just one year. year. Last year. year. Last year. Last year. Uh, and I got you. All right, nope, I just misunderstood what you said. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nope, I'm good. Pay the oldest year. You betcha. And I'll be. Long pay? Thank you. Okay. This one has to do with the um, road works on 202s. The town was in the town. It's safe for us to commit to the fact that we will allow them to have an older limit current if they need one. If we need a bond to protect our roads, we are allowed to do that, but they, they need to know whether or not we're going to require them. If you're going to refuse them a permit, if you're going to refuse them a permit, that's an issue. We're going to allow them to have a permit to make and proceed with the, the big process. I would think uh, that's great that there's really that it's going to be a big, you know, Etsy doing the, you know, doing the tire, but I'm not against them taking out a bond to cover our town really because. They trash those who pays for them. I don't even think they're going to be on the phone. They won't be. No, on the phone. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If they're, 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 they're going to they're be on town roads, they should take out a bond so the town yeah. 11 and then the taxpayers 11 don't get stuck paying for a new road. Yes. Yeah. So, so, well, there, 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 there's restrictions to that. So the state comes down and so much. That's fine. As long as, as, long as yeah. the town taxpayers are protected. Yeah. From some yeah. random big bill out of the blue. Because at the end of the day, I care about Lebanon. Lebanon cares about you, Jeff. Well, I'm a, I'm a good selector. I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Lebanon's a great town. So we got to protect it from certain influences and outside influences. Big meeting. I said what I had to say.
I think because of what Jeff said that if we get a contractor that's coming, say they decide to come through Milton because their GPS sends them through Milton, I think that because they're coming from the state, if you bring bring giant backhoe on a flatbed over, I think we should require a bond. Um, myself, I, I, yeah. I Just by signing this, it just says that this, they will help us right. with that process. Right. Correct. Right. So if we sign this, it's just so they won't give them permit before we can request them. Yep. Before we get the permit. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. That's all I heard. Yep. Yeah. 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 If they see our roads, they see our roads, they won't be able to. Maybe some fixed measure come down. Yeah. <laughs> now, what else you got? Did you uh, have a chance to address the issue of the uh, questions about the relief? I did not. Did you want to call up on that? Yes. If you, I'll come in tomorrow. Oh. It needs to be done by Wednesday. Right. I don't know. I'll, I'll contact them. Okay. And you don't want the kids, kids to grow that stand on the knee with them. Yeah. Well, maybe you have that. Did kids to grow submit any information? We're looking for financial information on what they do. You just got a room? Yeah. Um, we were doing the legal the marijuana. No. When are we gonna do this? Uh, hopefully next week. There's a couple other things that Gloria was talking to us about. Um, I do have one thing that I missed. So, in town here, we have someone that requested an abatement on the property, and, and it's more than just an abatement because. The woman who owned the property passed away several years ago. Um, but the town has still been addressing all legal correspondence to her, which is, according to the attorneys, not would not hold up in court if there was an issue with the property and things being paid. Um, personally, 2000, I think it was 2005, there was a mix up on the property of what was being charged and what was actually there. They're being charged on a new mobile home. Somebody built built a home that selectman went out and assessed it. And I think it's 2005. And they entered it into the system, according to what I understand. They entered the wrong address. They dropped off a two on the address. So this person's taxes went up. The woman did not catch it. And just three years later she passed away. So I'm assuming she was very elderly. But they all of a sudden the taxes went from being a 70s mobile home to a 2005 mobile home with a three car two car garage. So over the past 15 or 16 years, their taxes have been approximately double what they should have been. In um, looking into the abatement and correcting it, found out that the woman had passed, that the lien that we've attached to the property, these things are going on, is an illegal lien. So I have a motion um, to make, and this comes from the town attorney. So on the advice of the town attorney to authorize and direct the town clerk to record a discharge of tax lien recorded in the York County Registry of Deeds, book 18020, page 412, for unpaid real property taxes, assessed and committed for property located in Mount Lot R03 033 06B. Um, the motion I'd like to make is 
Uh, town clerk is hereby authorized and directed to report a discharge in New York County Registry of Deeds of tax lien reported in New York County Registry of Deeds at book 18020, page 412, for unpaid real property taxes assessed and committed for a property located in Lebanon, Maine, Map and Lot R03 033 06B. Do I get a second? Okay. And um, before we go any further for discussion, it doesn't forgive the tax. It's owed whether it's abated to the correct amount or not by the decision of the board. The taxes will still be owed on the property. It just gives the lawyer and everybody more time to straighten the whole mess out. And even if we were to go forward with the lien and take the property, it would not hold the court. Would that be a court issue, though? Well, it would well, be if we keep it. I did second the motion. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to move the property. Yeah. Where do you want me? Lynn, I did second his motion. Okay. Where are you going to say? Hi, Mary Beth. Hi. So, Mary Beth, you spoken to the representative from the town attorney, Ben? Yes. About um, the property that the person is deceased. Did, did they go into detail with you? Okay, so the person is deceased. He didn't call me back. Ben was supposed to call me back. Okay. All right. Um, so the person is deceased. It has been since 2008. And so our lien, because we didn't address the lien in the letters to heirs of or state of, I'm not exactly sure the protocol on that. Um, the attorney feels the lien is would not is an illegal lien and would not hold up in court if challenged if we took the property. So um, and I know that they asked you to discharge it and you said you wanted the approval of the select board, which was the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, so do you want me to read that motion again, Paul? Yeah, so, so she can hear it. Yeah. Because because you've got a connection today, so I did, yeah. Okay. So it says uh on the advice of the town attorney to authorize and direct the town clerk to discharge, record a discharge of tax lien reporting in New York County Registry of Deeds. At book 18020, page 412, for unpaid real property taxes assessed and committed to property located in Lebanon, Maine, Map Lot R03 033 006B. And the motion I made is the town clerk is hereby authorized and directed to record a discharge in the York County Registry of Deeds of a tax lien recorded in the York County Registry of Deeds at book 18020, page 412, for unpaid real property taxes. Assessed and committed for the property located in Lebanon, Maine, Mount Lot R03 033 006B. So, my only question is um, when did when were we contacted to say that this person was deceased? When did we know that? Oh, we, we didn't know that. That's not. Okay. That's not on us. No, they, that was not. We okay, were, we so there are. Notified. There's no, there's no blame here on any of us, or she's not, she's not going. No, no, yeah, I'm not yeah, blaming. Yeah, no, we weren't notified. There's just a main state yeah, statute. I don't, I don't think that, we were notified. That's what that was. says that, and I think Paul has a copy of it. I don't have it in front of me. That the assessing office does need to be notified. Otherwise, you would assume that that person is alive. And so, if, if you guys want to look no, at I'll it. I'll read it real quick, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm going strictly on the advice of the time. Yeah. On this one. Well, it sounds like then it would be up to the, the property owners now. Correct. Correct. We would need to know that, obviously, this yeah. person is deceased in 2008. Yeah. Well, and the, the biggest problem I have is this person's been, and it's evident from the tax records and the new assessment that was correct and this year their taxes are cut in half that they've been overcharged for since 2005 or six or whatever it happened you can only go back for a year i know that and that's the unfair part because this person has been overpaying their taxes by close to double 
for uh, 15 years. And we can only go back three years, correct? So we're talking $500 a year for 15 years, probably $7,500 approximately. And even if we give the abatement for three years of five or $600, they're still out $6,000. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm more than inclined to listen to the town attorney in place so they can straighten this out and we can get the correct amount and at least go back for three years to give this person what's legal. Because what's legal and right, as we all know, not always the same thing. And you know, especially since she was very old at the time that the family changed and just kept paying and then the heirs kept paying. It's, it's really come down to a fairness issue. So I think part of your concern was that how many more properties do we have that can be in similar situation? Yeah, I don't want to miss. I, I mean, I don't want this to happen. I mean, we yeah. have this conversation right. that um, we want to make sure that we're taxing the right person. So if we don't know a person is deceased, how do we know that we're taxing the right person? And who is it on? That was my question. Who, who needs to tell us or whose responsibility is it? Do we need to be checking records or, or whatnot? But from what I found, I believe it's that person needs to let the assessor know that. Yes. That's how I. I the assessor. person? Yes. Yeah, the assignee is supposed to let. And it's not in probate, right? It never went to probate. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We can't find any record of it. I mean, we did try to find. Yeah. I guess the question becomes whether in 2018, who no, 2008 maybe, was there notice given? I don't know. We don't know the answer to that. But until it gets to the bottom of it, I don't think it's unreasonable. Because it doesn't forgive the taxes. It just makes it so we don't take the property. And according to our lawyer, get challenged in court and lose in court. And then have a huge mess on our hands. Yeah. What's going on? Can we just give them a month, an extra month to come up with a payment? We did. We only have to pay one year right now? Yep. But he's well, still, he's still, he's still is requesting, he's still requesting a payment. And until the lawyer figures out about how the vacant works with the deceased person, it's just a mess that we're just better off, I think, discharging the lien. And I'm okay. sure we could. But were they, be, were they being charged the last three years for double rate? Yes. The last three years? Yeah, on the year. And if we need to, we can address a tax lien to correct where it needs to be addressed correctly and send that out. Again, I'm more than willing to go on the advice of the attorney. Personally. Have they filed abatement? It's being worked on. Maybe we should deal with it then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just read it. On the state? No. Just one student. I would think they would have to file for their abatement first before we make any decision like that. What to discharge me? Yeah. If they well, file for the abatement, then they'll have the dollar amount that they need to pay, and they and it, it will be discharged for them. Yeah, as long as they pay that amount, if yeah. it's being so abated. And if they don't pay it, and then we have to take the property, and then they they decide not to pay it, and then they sue us, and then we have to go to court, and it costs the town a whole lot more money. <clears throat> well, they need to file for the abatement first, I believe. I, I, my feeling, they should try out for the abatement. The, according to them, the abatement was filed. There's a question of whether it was filed properly or where it is or what happened. 
Well, if it was flying properly, it would be in front of us. Maybe. I'm going to go on the, I'm going to hear on the side of caution here. I'm going to go with what the attorney said. Because, in, you know, that's why we have attorneys, right? I mean, the, the, I've heard that a lot, you know. They make more an hour than you do. I don't know. I make pretty good money. <laughs> Most attorneys only average about 40000 a year. Not make, this one. Make a little bit more than that. Okay, you for a I got two sets of attorneys that work on me. I know. What? Mm -hmm. Just the 2000 Yes, but not the money, just the money. So money still. Uh, you can't do that. I, I don't know how to do that. How do you do that? Yeah, it's just yes. the lien that's being discharged, not the tax. So, the property tax itself. But, yeah. the, but the, the lien charges and all that will be. I don't know about that. It's what's that, 100 bucks? I'm, I'm asking. It's like, what's it, what are the lien costs? Well, it depends. Yeah. Um, around 50 yeah. bucks, roughly. So that, yeah. yeah, so that, I don't know if they'll have to pay that or not, but again, they have overpaid the town and it's <clears> evident <throat> from the tax bills. They've overpaid the town a lot. I guess to just discharge the lien, typically it says that they've paid back that money. So I guess I just need to know from you guys how exactly to do it because you do have to file it with the registry. So Stacy also signs off yep. on it. So you'll just have to let me know how so because I don't know how. What is the proper procedure? Yes, right. To discharge a lien for them to pay their taxes. And once the taxes are paid, we print off a lien discharge. Stacy signs it, it gets notarized, and then she files it with the registry. So once they file for their abatement, and they pay what they need, they'll be released. Well, we can't give an abatement according to the attorney until it's all figured out. Why can't they file for abatement for the last three years? It's legal. It's legal. There's no legal owner to the property because yeah. there's no it's, probate. It's a complete file. I was going to say, I rush through it, <clears throat> and if, we're, if we keep the lien and we're required in March, whatever it is, to take the property. March 29th, and we do take the property. It's simple, according to the attorney, they just need to file a suit for okay. incorrect notification, and it will be a mess. At minimum, we'll be sending our lawyers to court to fight it. At minimum. And then even if we win, that's it's still more than $50, isn't it? It's a 1970s mobile home. But we, we do have enough. So then we own the property. We pay the lawyers all the time. We do have, as selectmen, um, rather than have an automatic tax lien foreclosure, can be avoided by recording a waiver of foreclosure in the registry of deeds before the scheduled foreclosure date. So is that what you're he, trying he was, to, uh, would that be what it is? He's going to work with you on it. We okay. just need to authorize it. So it'd be a, it would be more of a waiver of foreclosure opposed to discharge of job well, I think that might be the difference. Yeah, no, it might be. Because I, I don't know. It, doesn't forgive, it does not forgive the tax. Yeah. It doesn't forgive the taxes. The taxes are still owed. It just says we're not going to take the property and post up here. Or we put a new lien on it correctly. Right. So this is something we could do this way. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna, my thought is to listen to the lawyer's advice and to completely follow their decisions on it. That's my opinion. My, my concern right now is that you don't have a clear path. Correct. So that we yeah. need to authorize her to be able to speak to him and to listen to what he says about discharging. But if she doesn't feel comfortable doing what the lawyer said, mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Okay. So if that's the only thing we can somehow put a caveat to this motion that she has to be in agreement with the process that's being used for her knowledge of the file now where it comes back to us. We have more time, we have to appoint it in March now. Yep. So if we authorize it with the caveat that 
you're comfortable with what he's saying, protecting the town's interest. Yeah, not, I just yes. need more information. Yep, no, sure. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's your responsibility. Yep. Yeah. All right, so I'll withdraw that motion. I'm going to try and move along the neighbor right now. No, you can keep that same motion, but just based no. on the fact that she agrees with what the attorney said. Yeah, that's what I'm going to add up. So I got to make a new motion. I'm going to change the word. Yeah. Yeah. It might be easier. Yeah. So um, if I'm going to make a motion. The town clerk is hereby authorized at her discretion to record a discharge in the York County Registry of Deeds tax lien recorded by York County Registry of Deeds. Book 18020, page 412, for unpaid real property taxes, assessed and committed for property located at map lot R03033-0060. I'm just a little weird with the word discharge because I don't know that it's a lean discharge. Well, uh, because that, I, if you're uncomfortable with what he yeah. says to you on that. Yeah. And you feel the need to you can call me or we can talk Friday or Monday. Yeah. And we can come up, I'll talk to the attorney and then we can revisit it and handle any concerns you have. Yeah. On Thursday. Does that work for everybody? So it's yeah. completely up to you if you're comfortable with how he describes it and what the fallout's gonna be and, and how to So I'll talk, talk to him. him. We'll talk to him on tomorrow or yep. Monday or yep. whenever it's and if you're comfortable yeah. with what he says and how he explains it's all gonna fall out and work. Yeah, absolutely. And you can go ahead. We're authorizing you to use your discretion to make the decision. Yep. If you're not comfortable, you can contact me with the concern or call. Or call yep. here. Sure. And then we can revisit it and change it up Thursday. Sure. Does that work? Yeah. Yeah. And I will definitely do my homework and yep. make sure that no, we're no. all comfortable with well, No, it. I appreciate you coming forward. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. He goes off Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm Any second? I'll second it. He said he supported it. So was he seconding it? No, he said support. I'm sorry. No, I'll second it. We had enough discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Not enough for you, but I think it's too much pressure on you. Um, can you think? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Sorry to keep you on the road. Oh, these are all the properties. Okay. I just want to see that I have them. Yeah. Thank you. Right, go for it. Do you have anything left? No. I don't. Does anybody else? Do you have anything for the further discussion? So you do, right? You don't know. You don't know? Well, I just had that one thing I wanted to give you. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. So I'll make a motion to go into executive session in one hour to say four or five, six days. The first one now. Second, all in favor. Five minutes. You didn't affect it, Jen. I know, I didn't get you all. Oh, my knees. Okay.